Is it GIF or is it JIF? The world simply may never know. But whatever way it is, I do know how to make them, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So over the last few years, we've seen kind of this explosion of visual content on social media, and it's a really great time to be a photographer or a visual content creator. And one of those trends that's really popular right now is GIFs. And when it comes to photography specifically, we're talking about looping GIFs or burst GIFs made of a sequence of photos. Now these sequence GIFs are a really great way to make the most out of your photos and a cool way to level up if you're looking to do more than just post those basic standalone isolated static photos that you're taking. And especially if you're a sports photographer and you're shooting with a high frame rate camera and you're shooting fast paced action sequences, those sequences are perfect for turning into looping GIFs or burst GIFs that'll really take your visual presence to the next level. Now what you're looking at right now are some examples from this past year that I made. And it turns out these are actually pretty simple to make and there's a couple ways to go about it. And today I'm gonna to show you two methods to do this, one in Adobe Photoshop and the other in Adobe Premiere. So let's jump right into the computer. We're gonna start on Adobe Photoshop and I'll walk you through it. All right, so to start, what we wanna do is find our original sequence of photos from whatever we shot. So I've got them right here in this folder called Original Sequences. You can see I've got all the raw files from this action sequence of photos right here in this folder. So what I wanna do before anything is create another folder on my desktop and call that sequence edits. Now we're gonna come back to that later. So what we're gonna do, we'll pull the sequence into Photo Mechanic just so you can see what we've got. We've got a basic sequence here of Nathan Evaldi pitching during a Red Sox game. You can see it's a rapid fire succession of photos that I shot. This was actually on a tripod, so it's gonna look nice and stable, but you definitely don't need a tripod by any means. So the first step that I always like to do is rename the files just to give it a good sequence. So I will call this Eovaldi GIF, and then I've got my sequence right here, and I'll just do 01, and that way everything's renamed nice and sequential in order. So then what I'll do is I will pull these all into Photoshop. Now remember, these are raw files, so this is gonna open up the camera raw editor. I'll full screen this for you. And then what I'm gonna do is make my basic color correction edits, toning edits right here in the camera raw editor. And I'm gonna apply those edits to every single photo in this sequence. So I've got another video on this. If you wanna take a look at how I do batch processing and batch color correction, I'm gonna link these right now. So you can check those out if you want. So basically I'm just gonna give this a nice little tone here make sure things look good. I always like to do this in the camera raw editor rather than while you're editing the actual GIF, just because you have so much more control here and it gives you a lot more options as far as how you wanna edit. So that looks pretty good just for this basic demo. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. I'm gonna option S click and that's gonna synchronize all my settings from that first edit to the rest of the sequence here. Now again, I have a video on that which I've got flashing right here. So now all of the photos in the sequence are edited with that exact same color correct. So then what I'll do is highlight all of my photos in this sequence and I'll go up here to the save icon in the top right corner. Now my destination, remember that folder that we made on the desktop called sequence edits? Well that's what we're going to go and save these JPEGs to. So basically what we're doing is saving down a JPEG smaller version of the original raw file that we used to start this whole project. So I'm gonna choose my sequence edits folder as the place that I'm gonna save the images. File naming, you can just keep it on document name. There's a couple other options here that you can use, but if you keep it on document name, it'll just save it exactly as what you called it before you brought it into the raw editor. Format JPEG. Quality, for the purposes of this, I'm gonna go down to medium but if you are looking for a maximum quality GIF, you can go up to high or maximum file settings. And then with your image sizing, I'm gonna recommend that you downsize the photos a little bit. Sometimes when you bring, when you bring really big raw photos or really big JPEG photos into Photoshop and you're making GIFs, it just kind of freezes up the program a little bit. So I always like to downsize the images just to make them smaller, just to make them a little bit more manageable. So I'm gonna make them 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now that's a 16 to nine ratio. 
So that's really good if you're looking to post for Twitter or if you're looking to use these as part of a movie or a video that you're making. Resolution is great at 300. And then I will hit save. And you can see in the bottom right corner, you've got all of your files saving into that edits folder onto your desktop. As these are done, we can close out of our camera raw editor, we can hit the done button. And if we go to our sequence edits folder that we made, you can see we've got all of the edited original raws now as JPEGs with a really nice small file size that are gonna make it super manageable to bring into Photoshop and edit into the GIF. And you can see all the color corrections that we applied are on all of these JPEGs. So these are ready to go and bring into Photoshop. So what we're gonna do, we can close out of this, close out of everything. We can go into Photoshop, then go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Then it's gonna bring up this file browser and then you just navigate to your Sequence Edits folder on the desktop right here. Highlight all of the files in the folder and hit Open. And you'll see it brings them right in here just in sequential order. You can hit OK. And then it'll kind of process through all the files. It'll take a little bit of time depending on how big you saved your file. But once they load, you'll see in your layers panel that each individual photo, each individual JPEG has been loaded in as its own separate individual layer. So you've got all 36 photos right here. Each is a separate layer. So from there, what you want to do is go to Window, and you want to open up your Timeline. So Window, Timeline, and that'll bring up this kind of video editor timeline down here at the bottom of Photoshop. Then what you want to do is hit Create Frame Animation, and that'll start with just the first frame. Then you can go to this little hamburger menu right here in the Timeline window, click that, and click Make Frames from Layers. And basically what that's going to do is bring in every single one of those JPEGs that you've got as those layers into your video editor timeline. And if you hit play right here, you can see that it'll start playing the GIF. Now typically when you hit play, it starts playing them in reverse for some reason. I really don't know why that's the case. I think it's just kind of a weird little glitch with Photoshop, but there's an easy way to fix that. Just go again to the hamburger menu, hit reverse frames, and then it'll start playing them in the correct order. And so you can see this is the start of your basic GIF playing all at once in sequential order, looping and looping and looping. Now you've got options here on how you want it to loop. You can have it loop once, you can have it loop three times, forever or other and choose however many times you want it to loop. Now I'm gonna keep it on forever. That's kind of the GIFs that we're used to seeing online that we all love. So just to play it through one more time, looks like everything's good, everything's moving. So once we're happy with that, you can go to export your GIF, which is pretty much the final step. So go up to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And this will bring up your export window with just a bunch of options now. I usually like to just zoom out so I can fit in view and see exactly what I'm looking at. And then we've got a couple different options here to work with. So as far as your preset, I usually do GIF 128 dithered. And then for colors, I like to go to 256. That'll make sure you've got your full range of colors. Now down here is your image size. Again, you can play around with that for whatever you want. I'm gonna keep it pretty much right where it is. And then again, you've got your looping options here. You can play whatever you want. And if everything looks good to you, then you can just save your GIF to whatever location you want. I'll call this Eovaldi GIF dot GIF. Hit save, and it'll take just a little bit of time to process that file. If we go to our desktop, we've got our GIF file right here. I'm just gonna hit the space bar to preview it. And you can see we've got a nice little GIF ready to go. You can use this on Twitter, on Instagram. You can use this as part of a video, whatever you want. So that is a nice, easy way to create a GIF quickly in Adobe Photoshop using just photos. All right, so that's pretty simple. Using Photoshop is a great way to quickly make a GIF that can stand alone on its own, that doesn't need anything else, and that's ready to go right away to put up onto your social media channel. But what if you wanna make something that's a little bit more in depth, that involves a little bit more storytelling or a little bit more of a narrative? 
Well, that's where Premiere Pro comes in. And that's what we're gonna jump into right now back on the computer. Even though we're going to be using Adobe Premiere, this whole process starts exactly the same as it did when we were using Photoshop in the previous example. So you can see I've got my original sequences folder right here on the desktop and that contains the original files that we're going to use. So again, just like before, we're going to make a new folder called sequence edits. And we'll come back to that later. So I'm gonna pull all of my sequences into Photo Mechanic just to show you what you're working with. So we've got two sequences this time, two different sequences. We've got a guy in the dugout wrapping his bat with a new grip. That's the first sequence. And then we've got a couple guys hanging out, looking at the camera, pointing, having a good time. So again, we're gonna rename our sequences. And so this one I'll call grip sequence, number it, zero, one. And then we're going to rename our guys in the dugout, call those dugout boys, sequence zero, one. And now we're ready to bring those into our Photoshop camera raw editor to begin the color correcting and transferring to JPEG. So I'll start with this one. We just, again, want to do our basic color correct just to get a little bit of a better, cleaner, more polished looking image. And again, always recommend doing these in the camera raw editor rather than in Premiere or in Photoshop. I think you just have the most control right here. So we will get the first one looking pretty good. Then we'll scroll down to the last photo in this sequence. Shift click to select all and then option S for synchronize. It'll bring all of our settings in you Can hit OK. And that will apply all of your color corrects to every photo in that sequence. And then we'll do the same thing for the next sequence. So just a quick color correct here. Enjoy the show. And that looks pretty good. So then we'll scroll down to our last image here. Synchronize all the settings. And now we've got all of our photos again, color corrected the exact same way that we did before. So then our last step in the camera raw editor is basically just to save these into JPEGs to convert them into JPEGs. So we will select the whole sequence, go up to the save icon right here and just walk through this dialogue. So our folder will be the sequences edits folder name we'll just keep the name exactly the same we'll keep them as jpegs we'll go to medium file size just to keep it pretty manageable for this demo and again we will downsize the images to 1920 by 1080 pixels hit save and then we'll just select our next sequence here and just go through the same dialogue everything looks good hit save so we've got everything saved we can hit done and exit out of the camera raw and as you can see in our sequences edits folder, we've got all of our files ready to go as small edited JPEGs. So what I did was I started a new project in Premiere. And once you open up Premiere, you wanna to go to import media right here and just find your edits folder. And basically you're gonna import all of your edits. So select all, import, and you'll see that it'll import everything that you just edited right here in a nice sequential order. So what you wanna do is select your first sequence, so that's the dugout boys, go to the first one, go to the last one, and just drag them all into the timeline. So that'll create the sequence of images right here on your timeline one by one. So each one of those little pink squares is a JPEG image that you just dropped onto your timeline. Now when I play these back, you can see that it's moving super slow one by one, frame by frame, that's not really gonna give us the effect that we want. So what we need to do is change the speed and the duration of each of these JPEGs. So what you wanna do is just Command A or select all, basically just drag your cursor and select all of them, and then right click, go to speed and duration. Now right here it shows you the duration of each one of the individual clips is one second, 1.29 seconds. So basically I'm gonna bring that down to zero and then I usually like to use zero three as a good starting point. That makes it nice and fast. So when you play them back, they're playing back much faster than they were before. And you wanna make sure you click ripple edit, shifting trailing clips. That'll make sure that it keeps each image right next to each other in sequential order rather than spreading them out along the timeline. So hit ripple. And as you can see, our duration just got a lot quicker. 
everything got chopped way down and if you hit play now things are moving more like the effect that we want. Now the beauty of Premiere versus Photoshop is it gives you a lot more flexibility as far as actually building out a narrative or building out a larger story or a larger piece of content. The Photoshop method is great for just a single quick GIF that'll stand alone as a GIF, but I like to use Premiere to kind of combine multiple sequences or combine multiple GIFs and build it out into more of an extended piece. I can go to my next sequence, which is the grip sequence, bring those right into the timeline, right after my original sequence of the guys. And then again, you can see the duration of these is much longer than it needs to be, so I'm gonna select all of them again, hit speed duration, change the duration down to 003, hit ripple, ripple edit, shift trailing clips, that'll bring them down. And so now you can see I'm transferring from one sequence right into the next and I could just repeat this process over and over again until I have a nice 30 second or 60 second or whatever kind of project you're trying to make like the example that I showed you earlier now as you get deeper and deeper into this edit you could always add music add transitions add some light leaks or some flares to really jazz it up but this is the basics of how to get them onto your timeline and animate it in that gif format so once you're happy with your edit you can just go to file export media and call it whatever you want to call it call it uh, baseball gif sequence and then you can just export it out now basically i just exported this as a movie file not as a gif so if i were to go and play this it's just going to play as a movie it's not going to loop like the photoshop one was that was looping forever and ever and ever. Now you can do this in Premiere if you want. So what I could do is just copy these. So select all, edit copy, bring my cursor right to the end of the last sequence and then go and hit edit paste. And that'll just duplicate everything. So it'll play through once and then it'll play through twice right here once it gets to the end of the sequence. So you're just repeating and you could copy that theoretically as many times as you want and out to a minute long or however long you want to do. And then it'll just constantly loop that over and over. You can export that as a movie and that will still give you that GIF effect. Both of these methods will give you great results in just a few minutes of editing time. I use both of these workflows in my day-to-day -day editing just depending on what kind of project I'm working on and what the end result or the end goal of that project is. So I find both of these methods super helpful. I hope you guys do too. I really appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. Let me know any questions you have, any comments. I'm all ears as always. If anything, just drop a comment down below. Let me know if you think it's GIF or GIF. The world will never know. I'll see you at the next one.